Are there any other votes? Announce the results. Eyes 47, noes 80. The resolution is lost. Mr. McKevitt. It's reading, move it to immediate adoption and request the opportunity to explain. Clerk will read. Assembly 834, Resolution 834, Mr. Cole. Assembly Resolution amending Section 1 of Rule 4 of the Assembly Rules in relation to standing committees. Mr. McKevitt on the resolution. Yes, Mr. Speaker, currently under the Assembly Rules for Committee Membership, it provides that the number of majority members of each committee shall be in the same ratio as the majority members of the House as to the entire members of the House, with all fractional members being credited to the majority. Our amendment would change that from all fractional members to the majority to all fractional members of one half or greater to the majority. The reason for this is that these are the very simple rules of rounding up, which we learned in elementary school, and even with common core math, our children are learning that's the rule. So for the sake of simplicity, to make sure that the rules of math are the same in this chamber, everywhere else, I'm going to move the adoption of this. Thank you. Mr. McDonough. resolution and all the others today. I just wanted to remark that I think this is the 13th one we presented today. I've been here 15 years and we've tried this over and over and over again. This morning, the minority floor leader laid out a very, very good case for all of these resolutions, that equal representation, all of that. And she explained it very, very carefully. The majority leader then came back and he explained his position and the majority's position almost was as if saying, this is the way we've always done it, and this is the way we're going to continue to do it. Well, I don't agree with that, because we represent, the 150 of us represent the entire state of New York. And our side on the minority represents a very large percentage of that uh, population of New York. So what I'm saying is that I watched these votes today, and they were almost in lockstep, with exceptions of one constantly and a couple others on different bills, who I don't know why they supported us, maybe it was their own political purposes or whatever, but it was like in lockstep, they went along with what's been happening every single year. The majority rule, the majority leader said, majority rule, I agree with the majority rule, but we represent our districts, and I guess what I'm saying is today as so many times in my 15 years here, the same thing has happened again. But maybe I should say thank you to the majority for this. Thank you for proving our point, because that's exactly what you're doing. And the people sooner or later will say to you, you can't keep doing this. We want the same representation that you have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Typically, uh, number 13 is considered lucky, but this is an unlucky day for the people of New York State. Thirteen times this body could have voted to reform the way we do business. Thirteen times the majority said no. We heard about supposed technical problems with some of these resolutions. That's interesting because the SAFE Act was riddled with technical problems, but you had no problem jamming that down the throats of New Yorkers, and we're living with those problems today. There are no technical problems with these resolutions that couldn't be very, very easily solved, if indeed there are any uh, to begin with. We heard an absolutely twisted and agonizing definition of what the majority means. The majority means the greater number. That's it. That's all. The greater number. All of us are elected by our constituents to come here and be their voice. So I invite all of you to go home to your constituents this weekend, and you tell them how you stood in the way of reform, given the fact that two out of the three amigos are awaiting sentencing. You go home and tell them that you said no to 13 reforms that made perfect sense only because you had the numbers and because you could. I don't think that they're going to think that you are representing their best interests, because I can guarantee you they want term limits. They want term limits on leadership. They want hearings. They want to see what's going on inside this chamber. They want to open up the process. They want 
sunlight and sunshine, and you said no. So good luck going home to face them at their pancake breakfast this weekend. I think you're going to get an earful, and I hope you do. This is absolutely a bad and sad day for the people of New York. Eight years is good enough for the president of either party, for president of the United States. But let's give a speaker that's awaiting sentencing. He was about to turn 20 years, I think, in this House. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. You turned a blind eye to reform. So please don't go home and say that you're fighting for reform. You had the opportunity to do it. You turned your, you turned your back on the process. You turned your back on your constituents. It's a sad day. These, these resolutions should have been passed. And now we get to go forward tomorrow to a state of the state and listen to a governor who's been under federal investigation lecture all of us about ethics. That's going to be pretty interesting. Now he has a leg to stand on because you just turned down 13 common sense reforms. Shameful day here in this chamber. The clerk will record the vote. Hold, hold on one minute. Excuse me. Mr. Saladino. Thank you. On the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, too, rise to call on the tremendous need for ethics reform. The people of our districts want this, but rather than throw stones, I appeal to the heart and the conscience of every member of this House. We know, we all watch the media, we all have seen and heard of what's gone on. The people want these changes. We put forth changes that make sense. Many of these changes empower individuals in the minority just as much as the minority, in the majority, rather. This is that time to act. Let your voices be heard. Make sure we represent the people with the changes that can bring about a new dawn in Albany and across this state, in every government. By voting yes, you send a message that you are with those who sent you here. I certainly will be voting yes for the people of the district back home who demand that change. And I call on each and every one of you to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The clerk will record the vote.
Are there other votes? Announce the results. I 40, ayes 43, noes 86. The resolution is lost. Mr. Morelli. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, uh, if we have uh, some housekeeping uh, to take up, this would be the appropriate time, followed by resolutions. And I understand that Ms. Bichot uh, would like to be heard on one of the resolutions. Certainly, Mr. Re Morelli. Pursuant to Rule 3, Section 2, the following bills are committed back to the Committee on Aging at the request of the Chair. Calendar number 167, Bill number 4037 by Ms. Robinson. Calendar number 205, Bill number 5320, Mr. Simbowitz. Calendar number 206, Bill number 5332, Mr. Simbowitz. Calendar number 335, yeah. Bill number 8228 by Mr. Simbowitz. Good. On behalf of Ms. Paulin, Bill number 269A, Assembly Bill recalled from the Senate. Clerk will read the title of the bill. An act to amend the public health law. Motion to reconsider a vote by which the bill passed the House. Clerk will record the vote. Clerk will announce the results. Ayes 143, noes 0. On a motion by Ms. Paulin, the bill is committed back to the Committee on Higher Education. On a motion by Ms. Paulin, page 4, calendar number 7, bill number 115, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Dinowitz, page 5, calendar number 13, Bill number 180, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Ms. Markey, page 10, calendar number 43, bill number 851, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Pretlow, page 10, calendar number 45, bill number 961, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Dinowitz, page 19, calendar number 94, Bill number 1998, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Lenthal, page 26, calendar number 135, bill number 2962A, amendments are received and adopted. On a motion by Mr. Zimbrowski, page 32, calendar number 175, bill number 4286A, amendments are received and adopted. On a Motion by Ms. Rosenthal, page number 50, calendar 266, bill number 7054, amendments are received and adopted. And on a motion by Ms. Russell, page 52, calendar number 278, bill number 7260, amendments are received and adopted. On a mo uh, we have a resolution. Clerk will read, Ms. Salage, Ms. Bechet, Ms. Jean-Pierre. Resolution number 860, Ms. Salage. Legislative resolution remembering the victims of the Haitian earthquake of January 12, 2010. Ms. Bichat, on the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to speak on this resolution. I first want to thank uh, my colleagues, the sponsor of this resolution, Mikhail Solage and co-sponsor, Assemblywoman Kimberly Jean-Pierre, for graciously allowing me to speak on this resolution today on our behalf as the Haitian American Assembly members of this House. Six years ago, Haiti experienced an unspoken tragedy, a natural disaster of tremendous proportions. It was a 7.0 magnitude shock wave that traveled across the island and reverberated around the world. It took the lives of hundreds of thousands and displaced millions. It is by far one of the most horrific natural disaster in recent history. It made the world notice of the forgotten Haiti. Over 300,000 people were killed. How much suffering can a country and its people take? Despite the Haitian people being raped of their economic system, stripped of social justice, 
and government democracy and denied a political asylum, the ha Haiti remained resilient and strong. And we are thankful for all the humanitarian aid from all over the world, as there are noticeable signs of recovery. We, the Assembly members, Mikhail Solage, Kimberly Jean-Pierre, and I, are asking this House to take a moment of silence to remember the hundreds of thousands of lives lost on January 12, 2010, and have hope that these people did not die in vain, but instead inspired hope for a renewed and stronger Haiti. And I also hope that in the future it does not take the natural disaster to give recognition to the struggles of Haiti, a country that have helped, empowered many nations, including this one. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Barron on the resolution. Uh, thank you very much. I want to say the reason why I think it's important for all of Americans to support this resolution, which most of you, I think, will, we must never forget that Haiti, it's because of Haiti that the Louisiana Purchase occurred, and that Haiti was responsible for that because of their victories with Toussaint Louverture and others fighting against Napoleon. So America owes a debt to Haiti. We owe reparations to Haiti, so does France, and this is the least we could do is this resolution. Thank you very much. On the resolution, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolution is adopted. We have several other resolutions, fine resolutions. We will take them up in one vote. All in favor of the resolutions, please signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. The resolutions are adopted. Mr. Morelli. Yes, thank you, sir. If we could call on uh, Ms. Schimmel for the purposes of an announcement. Ms. Schimmel for the purposes of an announcement. Yes, Mr. Speaker, there will be a majority conference in the Speaker's parlor immediately following the close of session. Thank you. Conference room. Thank you, Ms. Schimmel. Mr. Morelli. Yes, sir. Uh, just a reminder to all the members that tomorrow the governor will be delivering his state of the state and budget presentation of the convention center at 12:30. Um, and with that, I move that the assembly stand adjourned until January 13th, tomorrow being a legislative day, and that we reconvene on January 20th, which, colleagues, is next Wednesday, and we will be reconvening at 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Wednesday, uh, June 20, uh, January 20th. That will be a session day. The assembly stands adjourned.